In this video, we introduce a family of curves called hypocycloids. Our goal is to find the general parametric equations for hypocycloid curves, and then we'll illustrate a couple examples of hypocycloids by using animations. As we can see in this introductory animation, a hypocycloid can be formed by a point on a smaller circle rotating within a larger circle. This particular hypocycloid is three-pointed because the circumference of the inner circle is exactly one-third the circumference of the larger outer circle. So the smaller circle rolls exactly three times for each larger revolution. And in fact, the radii have the same relationship because circumference is proportional to radius. So I could say the reason this is three-pointed is that the radius of the larger circle is three times the radius of the smaller circle. So let's stop the animation real quick, and we'll see if we can get the parametric equations for a hypocycloid in general. And we have quite a bit of labeling to do here. I'm going to call the radius of the larger circle big R. And we're going to use a little r to talk about the radius of the smaller circle. And we're going to parameterize the entire curve in terms of this angle t. So that's the angle relative to that starting position of 0 down the positive x-axis. And by the time the center of the smaller circle has arrived at an angle of t, the smaller circle has revolved through an angle of theta. So our general strategy for parametrizing this curve is that we want to locate the center of the smaller circle and then we're going to find the displacement relative to that to get to the point that's actually on the leading edge of the curve as it's being traced. Well, this means we need to get a distance to the center of the smaller circle. And that's just going to be big R minus little r. So we'll go ahead and take a moment to write down the coordinates of the center of the little circle. Well, the x coordinate is going to be big R minus little r times the cosine of t. And the y coordinate is big R minus little r times the sine of t. Now we need to write down the location of that point on the edge of the little circle that's actually tracing the curve. And so we start at the center of that little circle, and then I'm going to need to draw a little right triangle here. And this angle right here is the same as t, which means the angle in this right triangle right here is going to be a theta minus t. And I can see that relative to the center, to get to the x-coordinate of the point on the edge of the little circle that's tracing the curve, I have to tack on a little r times the cosine of theta minus t. So I'm going to call that point of interest the trace point. And to get to the x-coordinate of it, I need the x-coordinate of the center of the little circle plus a little r cosine of theta minus t. And for the y-coordinate, I write down the y-coordinate of the center of the circle. And then I have a minus r times the sine of theta minus t. Okay, so there's just one more critical piece to the derivation. I have to parameterize this curve entirely in terms of one parameter, t. And that means I don't want to have the theta in there. There has to be some relationship I can find between theta and t. And the way I get this is by using the fact that this little circle is rolling without slipping inside the bigger circle, which means the two sections of arc that have been traced out so far must be equal. So I have this arc on the little circle. And I use the formula from geometry there that s equals r theta. The arc length is the radius times the angle subtended. And in this case, the radius is going to be little r, and the angle is theta. Well, that arc has got to be equal to this arc along the big circle. And that one uses a radius of big R and an angle of t. And this allows me to find a substitution for theta. Theta is going to be r, big R, times t over little r. I could plug that in right away into my trace point equations, but I'd rather simplify theta minus t in advance. So theta minus t is rt, big RT over r, minus t. If I then get a common denominator by multiplying t by r over r, I end up with r minus r times t in the numerator and a little r in the denominator, and I'm going to move the t out here to the side. So finally, I arrive at my parametric equations for the hypocycloid. So x of t is big R minus little r times cosine t. Again, that's locating the center of the smaller circle, plus a little r cosine of big R minus little r over little r times t. And that's telling you the additional horizontal displacement from the center of the smaller circle to the edge, where the leading edge of the curve is being traced. And we have that similar equation for y. So now if we're given big R and little r, we can immediately write down the parametric equations for the hypocycloid curve, and we can plug into our software to create an animation or at least a picture. 
So let's check out a couple examples of parametric hypocycloids. In the first one, I have big R equals 3 and little r equals 1. So I plug into my new formula, and I have big R minus little r for my first coefficient. That's 2, so I get 2 cosine t plus little r, that's just 1, times cosine of big R minus little r, that's 2, divided by little r, so I end up with a 2, times t. And my y coordinate, that's big R minus little r, that's a 2, times sine t minus little r, that's 1, times the sine of big R minus little r, which again is 2, divided by little r, which was 1, so I end up with a 2t. And now I can plug into my software and animate this thing. So let's check it out real quick. And you'll notice immediately that this is exactly the same three-pointed hypocycloid that we introduced the video with. Again, when the radius of the smaller circle is one-third the radius of the bigger one, then the same thing is true of their circumferences, and so it takes exactly three rolls of that little circle to complete the curve. Now in our next example, what I've done is I've intentionally broken that alignment by just a little bit. So little r is now 1.1, and that means by the time the little circle goes through three revolutions, it's going to have passed up the point where it would complete the curve perfectly. And so it's going to take some careful thought to figure out, well, what angle do we have to go through to actually complete the curve? If it missed by just a little bit on the first revolution, it'll miss by a little bit more on the second one and so on and so on. But eventually it should line up again. First, let's get the parametric equations. This time the difference between big R and little r is 1.9. The coefficient of the second term is little r, so that's now 1.1 and then cosine. And then I have big R minus little r, which again is 1.9, divided by little r. So I have 1.9 over 1.1 times t. And my y coordinate, same coefficient there in front of the first term, 1.9 times the sine of t, and then minus little r, that's 1.1, times the sine of big R minus little r over little r times t. So there's my parametric equations. And now I can go to my graphing software and produce an animation of this thing. But if I only graph it on 0 to 2 pi, it's just going to be a tiny part of the complete curve because it hasn't gone around enough times to connect itself again. So I want to talk about what are the bounds on t that makes it so we've turned around enough times to reconnect this curve. And I'm going to start with this relationship again that the arc lengths traced out are going to be equal. So little r theta is equal to big R t. And that means 1.1 theta is equal to 3 times t. And then what I want to find is a moment where I've gone through an integer number of rotations of theta. In other words, it's an integer multiple of 2 pi at the same moment that t is an integer multiple of 2 pi. And this means we're back to our starting point. So I have an integer number of turns of the smaller circle right at the moment that I'm back to the positive x-axis. That's going to be the connecting point. So I'm going to write down that theta is equal to 2k pi, an integer multiple of 2 pi. At exactly the same moment, t is equal to 2n pi for some other integer n. And that's going to be our condition that allows us to figure out how big t has to be to connect this curve. I cancel a 2 and a pi. And I arrive at the condition that 1.1k is equal to 3n where k and n are both integers. And another way to put it is to multiply by 10 on both sides and solve for n, and I get 11 over 30 k is equal to an integer n. And 11 and 30 have no common factors in them, so I can't simplify things at all. The only way I'm going to get an integer for n is to use k equals 30, or a higher multiple than that, but we're interested in the smallest possible value. And when I plug in k equals 30, I get that n is equal to 11. And remember, n was the number of complete rotations for the parameter t. And so what I need is 11 complete rotations for t. In other words, my maximum value for t to complete this curve exactly once is going to be 11 times 2 pi, or 22 pi. So we're going to plot this thing in an animation on 0 to 22 pi. And that should be the exact moment where the curve is completed. And you'll notice by design that with that little circle a little bigger than it was supposed to be, it's just 
kind of overshooting a little bit each time on connecting the curve. And we're going to have to go through 11 total rotations of that parameter T. And we should see this thing completed. Okay, so there's our complete hypocycloid. For the case where the radii were just a little bit off and we ended up with a beautiful design required to get to the point where we completed the curve. That completes our short introduction to hypocycloid curves. In a follow-up video, I compute the arc length of one of these things, and I'll post a link to that at the top real quick. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. And I'll see you next time. If you find the math content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce dozens of new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.